Hi guys, welcome to Ninja Canada Girl. My name is Neka and I run Ninja Canada Girl. So basically, Ninja Canada Girl is a platform where I share my experiences about my adventure of moving to Canada as a permanent resident. Yes. So basically, I share tips on how you can settle, survive. Um, I also share my little secrets on things that could help make the process a bit easier or swifter. You know, just basically take away some of the stress, you know, or uncertainties about the process. Yeah. So that's what I do through my videos. I have an Instagram channel. Um, I have an Instagram page. I have a blog and I have this YouTube channel. They are all at Niger Canada girl. So hit the subscribe button. If you're yet to check out my other pages, welcome. So like I always say, I'm not an expert. I'm not an immigration consultant. I just share my experiences and experiences of some friends who also went through this process with me and are currently here as well. So today, guys, I'll be talking about the topic you've all asked for, which is what well, most of you have asked for. Like if I um, had a dollar for every time someone said, Neka, talk about getting a job in Canada. I'll be balling by now, right? Well, so guys, let's get right into it. Today, I'll be talking about how to get a job in Canada. Interesting, right? Well, so the thing is, there isn't any one size fit all answer i could give you right now and say yeah this is exactly how you get a job in canada but there are however tips that i know have worked um worked for me worked for my friends you could also um try out and the process would definitely be much easier for you first thing i should let you know about getting or searching for a job in canada is different people have different experiences what do I mean by this? So there are many factors that could determine how quick you get a job or not get a job as soon as you come into Canada as a new immigrant. So one of the things, um, one of these factors, um, one of these factors is um, your field, your career field. Some career fields are certainly much easier to get into than the others. I'm not going to go naming um, certain career fields, but there are actually some fields that are in demand. For instance, I'm sure you've probably heard already, IT is in demand here in Canada. So some are in more demand than the others. Now, this doesn't mean that if your field is not in demand, you don't get a job. You might just have to put in a little more work. And don't take it for granted that your field might be in demand so you don't have to do so much. As a matter of fact, the process of finding a job here in Canada requires on learning some of the things you knew and learning new things. So when I say things you knew, I mean regarding the job market, which are some of the things I'll be talking about today. So now let's talk about the initial preparation to even, you know, find a job. Your resume, for instance. So your resume is, I mean, you all know what your resume is, your CV and all that. So there are some things you might also have to learn about your resume. There's a particular format your resume would have to be in. There's a Canadian format, like how the Canadians expect or the Canadian employer would expect your resume to look versus how your resume currently looks, okay? So while I'm not here to talk about how you can fix your resume and all of that, I'm just going to guide you through the process. So one of the things you can do even before you start looking for a job is you can look for pre-employment services. So thankfully, the government of Canada have made many of these services free. Yet for some of them, you might have to pre, um, pay for some extra value. But there are so many pre-employment services where you actually attend seminars, where experts in the field and mentors actually come to coach you on what your resume should look like, an overview of the Canadian job market, what you thought you knew versus what actually is, what is the hidden job market, how can you penetrate this job market, what are those tools you need to use you know, that could help you get into the job market. So these are seminars that pop up all the time, right? So there are so many bodies that organize things like this. So these are some of the things I think you should be getting into as soon as you land just so that your mind, your um, horizon is broadened. You already know, oh, okay, this is what I have to do. They could even help you with your resume. They could look into your resume, um, give you tips on what you should do, what you should take out, how best to format your resume, how the Canadian ex um, employer would expect your resume to look, okay? So now some of these um, bodies that organize things like this are um, sponsored by the Canadian government for permanent residents like you. Um, so there is YMCA. 
So one of the things you can do as soon as you land Canada is look for your nearest YMCA and um, you can join them. They always have timetable and um, seminars, some are webinars, like they have them online. You can join and take in a lot of this knowledge and apply to yourself as well. Another one is access employment. So the great thing about um, access employment is um, once you have your, um, you're already in the process and your, that's um, your PR process, you know, you can even join access employment like three months before you land. A lot of their courses and coaching and webinars, um, a lot of these things happen online. So already, even before you land, you're already able to start learning some of these things. You already have, and you're already able to set your expectation. You already know how your resume should look. You're already taking in a lot of this knowledge. And best of all is that you already have a mentor. So this is um, someone you could email back and forth and they could give you tips and advice. You know, so these are some of the things you should already start, even um, start getting into even before you land. So another one is um, Humber. Humber is also um, an employment service. So there are many of them, okay? So what you need to do, like I said, as soon as you land, find out one of them and get with the program. So if they require that you come in and register, do so. There's also the newcomer center. So, you know, they have job fairs, they organize different things that expose you to the job market. Okay. So it at least gets you ready for the job market. So, um, this is just like in preparation for getting into the job market because the tool you're going in with is your resume. So it doesn't matter how experienced you are. If you're not able to communicate that in the way they would expect you to in your resume, it really amounts to nothing to them. Okay. Great. So now let's talk about applying for jobs, actually. So there are many ways you could go about searching for a job. So now let's assume your resume is right. Everything is great. Everything looks good. And now you're revving and ready to go. What next do you do? So Canada also um, has a lot of online um, job sites, job boards. You can register, um, you can register, so just like reg regular job sites, register based on the location you're searching, based on your field, and then you're able to see daily notifications of jobs. One I would highly recommend is Indeed. Quite honestly, by the way, I have gone for loads <laughs> of interviews in Canada and majority of them came through Indeed, right? So I think Indeed is a very valuable tool. So you can either download the app indeed.ca um, or just go to the website indeed.com and search for jobs based on your field, search for jobs based on where you, your location, you know, just search based on your industry and you'll see really relevant results. Now I must give you a heads up about this. If you are not yet here in Canada, you might not be required to take some of these steps well, apart from, you know, just reaching out to people on LinkedIn and just preparing yourself, for actually being here, reaching out to employers and honestly setting the, the expectation, letting them know I would approximately be in Canada by XYZ time and all that. Because if you just apply and they don't know this, the assumption is that you are already here in Canada. So imagine that your, um, your PR documents aren't ready yet and you apply for a job. They invite you for an interview. How exactly are you able to handle this? So actually 90 or 80% of some of the things you can do can be done while you are already here. The remaining 20, just like joining Access Employment, reaching out to people on LinkedIn and speaking about LinkedIn, you know, so you're just using LinkedIn to try and build networks before you get here. So you can use LinkedIn to connect to people in your field. So if your field is marketing, if your field is, if your field is auditing, if your field is HR, you're already able to reach out to people who are in this field and these fields and, you know, you're able to connect, you know, have a template of an introductory, um, an introductory email or, you know, something you could send to them. Hey, this is what I am, or this is who I am. Um, I'm in the process and I'm just trying to, you know, get to always ask for advice. Don't just tell them I want a job, you know. Just ask for advice you know i just want advice on you know how the job market there is and you know so they are more likely to respond when you do that so these are some of the things you can do in preparation for the job market so like i said when you finally get here and you've gone for those seminars your cv and resume is ready to go what next do you do you apply 
you need to be consistently applied on Indeed. So if for every 50 jobs you apply to, you get what now? 10 interviews. This means that, okay, so for every 50 jobs you apply to, you get 10 interviews. And for every 10 interviews you go for, you get feedback from like two. So what does this mean? You need to apply to more jobs. So the more jobs you apply to, the more um, likelihood of interviews, um, interview invitations you'd have, okay? So what this actually means is you need to actively be in the market. You cannot be tired of applying. And contrary to what many people say or what many people think, you know, people just think, oh, when you come to Canada, the jobs are just there waiting for you. Yes, the jobs are there, but you need to prepare yourself. And like I said, you need to be ready to unlearn so many things you thought you knew and taking a lot of new information that would help you throughout your job search. I should also let you know that it is not abnormal to land Canada and still be in the process of, you know, getting a job in the first two months, in the first three months. Actually, it's expected, which is why you're required to have proof of funds to sustain you for this period while you are still searching. So don't get anxious, don't get all agitated. You just need to be consistent in whatever it is you've chosen to do, okay? So um, some of the other ways you can get jobs are job fairs. The great thing also about Canada is employers are always willing to help. They always organize job fairs and hiring events. So what are these events? These are events where you go to sell yourself. So there's, there'll be so many employers from different organizations. There'll be other candidates like you. So basically, you're just having a conversation. This is an opportunity for them to find out more about you, for you to find out more about them, and see if you guys can proceed to a next stage, right? So just basically, you selling yourself. So this is what job fairs are like. You can download apps like Eventbrite. So Eventbrite curates different events. Well, not just um, not just professional events, even social events. It curates events happening in your area. So you can download Eventbrite and set your location and look for events, hiring events, you know, you could attend. So this could potentially help you meet, meet your next employer, okay? And then also there is networking. So networking is something Canadians are big on. So yes, we have jobs online advertised, we have job fairs and all that, but it's something called the hidden job market. So these are jobs that are available, but are not out there on the internet. So let's say I work in company X and I have a colleague, um, colleague A, who just resigned. So he hasn't even gone out there yet. But already my manager A is telling me, oh, we'll be hiring someone soon. And then guess what? I meet you somewhere. And then we talk about life. We talk about other things. And then I strike a conversation. Oh, what do you do? You tell me, oh, this is what I do. And I'm like, oh, really? We actually have an opening for XYZ position in my organization that you might be a good fit for. Guess what? I could refer you. So what referrals do we hear? So for Canadians, they're big on referrals. They'll rather fish from a smaller pool of people that are referred before going into the bigger pool of people they know nothing about. So if you strike up a conversation with someone, some of the things you should be talking about is, oh, what do you do? This is what I do. This is what I'm looking for. I know how many times I've had this sort of conversation and someone is like, oh, really, I think there's something organization. I think you should, um, you should, you should, you should give it a shot. And they send me, a, they send me a link or they refer me, you know, 90% out of 100, these have worked. So when I say these have worked, actually do get interviews or do get a call from the employer. Some of them do not always translate to a job in the end for one reason or the other, but it's always a first step, okay? Like referrals are really, 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 really wonderful things here. Like they work, okay? So this is another way um, you can get a job. So I actually just noted some points here and things you should bear in mind. So when I'm done, I'll do a quick recap. So you're also able to know what next to do right after this video, okay? So also, what happens if, because I'm trying to be as realistic as possible here. So what happens if, for instance, um, your field is accounting, you've been here for what now, five months and it's not working, you're, you've depleted your proof of funds, you don't have enough funds anymore, what really do you do? Now, this is where, you know, um, in my opinion, you have to be realistic. So when I say realistic, I mean 
these bills are monthly so if you finally rented a place guess what you're having to pay your bills every month if you have a credit card you're servicing your credit card every month you're paying your phone bills every month you're paying your utility bills every month so this means that there are monthly bills that cannot necessarily wait for you to get a job they are there whether you have a job or not now depending on how much you have you know you might have so much money and you're like i don't care if it takes me one year to get into my field i am ready to wait and it doesn't matter i can afford it well and good but if all in all honesty you are you're low on cash i mean even coming here you know how much you have to run around to put cash together to come here and you're thinking realistically now but really i need to do something what can you do while waiting okay which is what I'll be talking about now so here in Canada there are things people call survival jobs so the definition I like to um, give survival jobs are jobs you can do to make money that are not necessarily in your field while waiting to get a job in your field or while trying to get recertified in your field so now let's talk about recertification in your field so the thing with Canada here is there are some fields need certification there are some fields that are highly cert uh, that are highly regulated that you cannot operate in that field without a certification. So things like medicine, pharmacy, even engineering, you know, it's not that you can't get a job in that field, but employers would not pay you as much attention as someone who is already certified. So you might come here and realize, oh, wait a second, I actually need to do a course or I actually need to do this training or I actually need to write an exam before I get a job in my field by all means please do that you know you should never live in denial and you know just feel oh it's not working and that's it if there's actually something wrong and you identify it you need to fix it if you feel you need to go back to school to get recertified if you feel you need to go take a course if you feel you need to do something part-time by all means you should actually you know go ahead and do it so while doing all of this, are you thinking, oh, can I can I do a survival job while waiting? Can I, you know, work part-time somewhere while waiting? So there are also jobs like this, okay? So the easiest one people jump at, um, I would say, are call centers. So with call centers, what are you doing basically? You're helping and assisting customers over the phone. That's one of them, okay? There are also admin jobs. So depending on the province you live in, the good thing is whatever, whichever of these jobs you choose, Depending on the province you live in, there is a minimum wage. So you would never be paid anything. In, I live in Ontario. That's my province. You'll never be paid anything less than $14 an hour for doing these jobs. So these jobs are not jobs, you know, to get into and, you know, just decide to stay forever, except you become confident and feel you like it. But these are just realistic jobs to survive. So you could be discussing with some friends and people could tell you, oh, never, I could never do those jobs. But you can't already take you know you can already be on their side of the fence because we all have peculiar situations if um if mr a has um ten thousand dollars in his account to survive while waiting for a job and you barely have two thousand left because you know you're almost done with your proof of funds you need to start thinking realistically okay so there are jobs like this and how do you get them they're also online you could go online and apply to them okay so um that is all about survival jobs. And I also mentioned about recertification. You might realize that, oh, I might need to get recertified. I might need to take a course or two before getting back into my field. There's also the opportunity to do that here. There are online courses. There are part-time courses you could take in the evening and all of that. And then another thing you should consider are internships. Why do I say internships? So internships are... Um, so the good thing I like, the good thing about internships is that they help you build a Canadian experience, right? They help you build Canadian experience while you're waiting. So with internships, you could intern with an organization doing, um, working in your field. So you're not paid as much as a full staff because you're not a full staff. You're not working as many hours as a full staff because you're not a full staff. But what are you doing? You're getting your foot in the door, right? So even so, for many of these companies, sometimes after your duration of internship, they decide to hire you, which is great for you. Some other times, even if they don't hire you, you have Canadian experience and you stamp that on your resume. So the next person who's, um, who you apply to says, oh, he has worked with this company. Okay. And guess what? You now have, a, you now have someone who could, um, who, could be, who could serve as a reference and 
you know state how good you were while working and all these matter to canadians you know they are more big they are, they are more what's the word now they are more into character and soft skills than they are into technical skills so yes they appreciate that you're able to do the job you know you've been hired to do but they also love that you know how to fit into the work environment this is another thing some of those bridging programs i told you about would help you with so i mentioned access employment earlier so if you register for access employment right now while you're still in um, your home country you're taking their online classes when you get here you can actually go and continue now this time it's face to face i think at that point you might need to pay an amount of money but it's going to be worth it because what they do is they expose you to employers you know they invite employers they um connect you with organizations you could intern with another one is um career edge so career edge you could just register online while applying for and then they send you notifications of jobs um, in your field while applying you'll be required to just make a short video to sell yourself okay so these are ways you could get your your um, foot in the door okay so basically um this is everything i have to say about getting a job in canada okay but before i wrap up this video and do a summary i'll tell you some things you should consider so number one thing to cons consider is that people have different experiences trust me i've had friends who landed here two months boom they're in the market no they did not have to do a survival job or anything they they um, got jobs straight in their fields you know some of them even had higher got higher positions than they had back home okay so different people have different experiences different experiences it's a 50 50 thing okay in fact actually most of the people i know this is just to give you some level of hope and confidence most of the people i know um who relocated to canada just like me as a permanent resident currently work in their fields in great companies and earn very well yes some of them had to wait um as much as three four and even five months but right now they are doing very well okay so that's one thing you should note people have different experiences do not base what your experience might be like based on someone else's experience you need to go through your own process okay another thing you should notice if you work for a multinational currently it's going to be a great idea to, you know, first try reaching out to that same multinational. If they have, you know, an out, um, an outfit like a brand here in Canada, you know, you could just go to them, reach out to someone online who works there, you know, try and go to their website, see what um, openings they have and apply because they know you already know the system. You work for the same company back home. They might just hire you. So, when you start applying for jobs, those are some of the places you should check first, even if it's not that company. So let's use the big four. So um, let's use the big four, for instance. So now big four, I'm talking about KPMG, PwC and all that. For instance, you worked in KPMG back home. Nothing stops you from trying EY. Nothing stops you from trying PwC when you get here and also still trying KPMG. Okay, so there's actually a high rate of hires, especially by these big four companies of people coming from Nigeria. They hire them a lot. So that's also something you can consider. You can consider the same company you worked with or a similar field. Okay. If you worked in Heineken back in Nigeria, that's a Nigerian breweries. You could come here and try AB InBev, Labatan, you know, other Molson, other breweries that could potentially need your skills. Okay. Um, what else? Like I said, there are some fields that are easier to get into than the others. So if you find out that your field might mean that you might mean that you need to get recertified it's always best not to waste any time okay there are courses you could take online if you could start doing your research even before you come here on what certifications you might need to make your process easier to make your entry back into your field easier you could start okay so for instance as a marketing person i can tell you straight up you probably need to get your Google Analytics, um, get your Google Analytics certificate. You need to get your Google AdWords certificate because why it's global. So it's not relevant only in Nigeria. It's also relevant here. So if you're in marketing, these are some things you might need to have so that sliding into the digital space will be much easier for you. Okay. Something else you should consider is patience is key. So yes, you might, 
you might you might have just waited for two months and it's feeling like two years you need to hang in there okay like i said i do not know anyone i mean i've been here for a little over a year now well a year actually and i do not know anyone who is not sorted right now i do not know anyone who came the same period i came that is not sorted everyone is doing very great earning very well okay so will you get a job yes you will you might not have the same paths to getting a job like other people you might know but you will get a job and you will be fine that is just something i want to let you know but then you need to put in the work if you need to go back to school take an online course you need to do it like i always tell people canada is not a career decision for me it's a life decision right so i decided to become a permanent resident of canada because of the quality of life i know i can get here my career definitely fell in place when I came here, but that was not just the only reason I came here. So being a permanent resident is enough to be grateful for. So while you're still basking in the happiness, you know, and being grateful for having this opportunity, take your time to get a job. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel pressured. Take the steps you need to take to get you to where you want to go okay so now let's just do a quick recap because i know i've said a lot and you know i've just had things flying everywhere so now let's bring it all together what do you need to do even while you're back in nigeria if you're still in nigeria you can start by connecting with people on linkedin linkedin is a very powerful tool reach out to people in your field in the city you'd be going to introduce yourself just get an insight on um, how um how it, easy or not it might be getting into your field when you get here just try and establish networks you never know who might have a referral for you join bridging programs online like access employment when you get here continue with access employment consider internships now while doing all this you're, these you're still applying even before you apply i also mentioned attend pre-employment services events um pre-employment services go to places like ymca places like jvs toronto uh, places like new commerce center places like humber these people organize seminars and webinars they bring they assign you to a mentor and they just basically guide you through that process and these are mostly sponsored by the canadian government so they actually do try to try and help you do try to you know get you back into um your field okay so attend these things go for job fairs attend the um download the eventbrite app look for job fairs in your area go and sell yourself to employers and in all of these, while doing all of this, do not forget, you need to be patient, okay? So guys, this is my little advice about how to get a job in Canada. And how could I forget, Indeed is your best friend, trust me. So there are so many job, um, job boards and job sites. There's Monster, there's Glassdoor, there's the LinkedIn job app. LinkedIn is also great. But for me, um, I don't know if you've had the same experience with Indeed. But indeed.ca has been awesome for me, okay? So you guys should also download that app. And I wish you all the best in your job search. And trust me, everything will be fine. Like I said, I, I do not know anyone who has been here for what's over for more than a year or even up to a year that isn't settled now. And by settled, I mean doing a job and living well. And growth here in your career is progressive. Once you get your foot in the door, you can only go higher. You can decide today, I don't want to work for this company anymore. These guys are willing to pay me more. Guess what? You have Canadian experience. You apply and you move. So it's easier to move upward. It's a progressive movement as soon as you get in. Okay? So I hope this is helpful. There might be some things I might not have touched. Feel free to slide into my DM, ask me a question, post a comment on YouTube. I'll be glad to answer, okay? So I hope this is um, this is going to at least help you know what to do next and how to proceed and also give you some reassurance about getting a job here in Canada. Okay, guys, to my next video, be good and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Bye!